district of San Francisco, the hidden gem of the city. The Mission District has long been a voice of change and a mecca for food, art, and other cultures. The historically Hispanic community has been going through a lot of changes in recent years, so I decided to set off on a voyage to try some of the best food and find some of the best art that the district has to offer. My first stop was Limon Rotisserie. Located on the corner of South Van Ness and 21st, this Peruvian restaurant, owned by two authentic Peruvian men, provided a nice mix of modern and traditional. We got a veggie empanada, papas fritas, a chicken empanada, and lengua a la parilla, beef tongue. <laughs> this was definitely a new experience for me, but the food was delicious. I didn't really know what to expect, but I went into it with an open mind and was pleasantly surprised. Only one block north of Limon Rotisserie is San Jalisco, a Mexican restaurant located on South Van Ness and 20th. <clears throat> it's a traditional style restaurant and it has some bomb ass food. <laughs> there is an amazing kind of air in there. Um, it's decorated really traditionally and it's amazing. There's always a wait and uh, it's honestly a blessing to get food there. Um, we went and we got a burrito. Um, my vegan friend made her, vegan, made her finish all of it. Um, I got the Huarache con Nepal, which is cactus. I ate cactus and it was absolutely delicious. Like, unbelievably amazing. And also, then my other friend got a wet burrito, which she did not finish. It was huge. Absolutely delicious, though. And also, the guacamole. Amazing. Um, I absolutely love this place and I would 100% go back every day of my life if I could. <laughs> <laughs> After we went to San Jalisco, we headed off to the park. It was a sunny day, so we knew that, of course, one of the most popular places in the Mission District would be packed. Dolores Park. Mission Dolores Park. This park has, in recent years, attracted every young person in San Francisco on a sunny day to dance around, smoke some pot, and drink some beer and wine with maybe a picnic. After that, we walked and we went to go see some of the most amazing murals in the Mission. The streets of the Mission District are completely packed with different murals and they are completely and utterly gorgeous. Um, a lot of them have a lot of messages of social justice and political change. Um, one of the most popular places is the Women's Building. The Women's Building is completely covered from the top to the bottom with murals and it's absolutely beautiful and it is a not only a living art piece in a way it also provides amazing services to women um, who are in need of help and they advocate for women's, women's rights and this is a place where women can go for any sort of help especially women of color um, and it's an amazing resource for everyone and the murals are gorgeous and all of them portray women in strong and powerful roles um, and it's an amazing addition to the beautiful district as a whole. Next we were heading off to Clarion Alley. This is an absolutely beautiful space covered just in different murals saying different amazing messages of change and political times. A lot of the central ideas of these murals is the idea of gentrification. Um, since 1990, the number of white inhabitants of the Mission District has gradually increased from being below 50 to above 70%, and it's still um, rising. 
The Hispanic members of the community have been forced out to make room for cafes, Pilates cl classes, and the newest unicorn food fad restaurant. Now, this district, with rich with history of Hispanic culture, has been completely disenfranchised by the real estate industry, and the people of this district are fighting back against that. They want everyone to know that they are not leaving anytime soon. And these murals are an amazing depiction of that sentiment. There are um, just absolutely unbelievable representations of the emotions of the entire district as a whole and the fight against gentrification and forcing people who have spent their entire lives living there out. Speaking of gentrification, one of the many, many stores that have popped up in the Mission District who cater to the hipsters and people who decided that it was cool to live in a area that was previously inhabited by other people is Gracias Madre. This is a LA-based um, food chain that is completely vegan and Mexican. Um, now, they claim to be traditional, but to me, vegan and Mexican kind of seem, sounds like an oxymoron. Katie, closer. <laughs> Look at all the white people here. We got some, an empanada and cheese, nacho cheese cauliflower. Um, well, we all agreed that the food was pretty good. It just didn't even match up to any of the other food that we had that day. And my friend Viv is going to talk about how she felt about they, it. They were trying to be Hispanic, but they weren't at all. Might as well just not even call it Gracias Madre. Might just call it Thank You Mom. <laughs> Everyone goes off. Oh, see? That's Gracias Madre. <laughs> That's it. That's also the man for Gracias Madre. <laughs> I call him. Um, Was he one of the people in there? Um, wait, what's his name? Like for oh, Colonel, Colonel Sanders. Sanders. Yeah, that's Senor Sanders. <laughs> so my gr my grandma would have went in there and she would have cussed everyone out, <laughs> jumped behind the counter if she could because she weak legs. She'd probably gain strength in that second, jump over the counter, slap them all, and then teach them how to cook some real shit. Oh my god. You know. So, gracias madre, um, sorry abuela. <laughs> the Mission District is an absolutely beautiful part of the city. I would absolutely encourage everyone to go there and to support locally owned and like raised businesses and people so that the lovely people of the Mission District can continue to live there. Thank you.